Hey, welcome back everyone to another great episode of Sellers Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we go over the importance of vehicle safety. So stay tuned, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. As I said, another great episode right here on the channel. Sell those flipping cars. I'm Zachary, and today we're going over the importance of vehicle safety, guys. When working on your vehicle, it's great to save a buck, and there's nothing wrong with that, but saving money doesn't really, you know, go over the priority of living. Right, so you wanna do everything you can to actually stay safe while you're working on your vehicle. And there's some certain subjects that I went ahead and highlighted in this episode for you to actually watch out for while you are working on your vehicle so you remain safe and you continue saving money for yourself and your family. So let's go over those things, guys, jump into it. The first thing that keeps us safe and all of our occupants is to keep our maintenance intervals up to date, okay? A great example. See the serpentine belt? Yes, you don't see any cracks, and yes, it looks shiny, okay? But do you see all the ribs in it? That's bad. That means your serpentine belt is going to fail soon, okay? That is a safety concern. Look at the way it should look. And look at the way it does look. You see the difference? Okay, this is a safety concern because if that serpentine belt was to break, you are now broken down. And now your safety is at risk because you did not keep your intervals up to date, okay? Breaking down is just as bad as getting in an accident, everyone, because now you are a risk to everyone else on the road because you are now broken down on the side of the road. That's why police uh, officers and state troopers and everyone stop and turn on their lights because now you're a hazard to everyone else on the road, okay? Another thing, your battery, okay? This goes with your maintenance. Keeping the posts cleaned up. That way you have a clean connection. The battery is it's nice and tight. Shouldn't have to move it, but you don't want to over tighten it either, guys. If it's if you you know move your finger like that, and there you go, and it doesn't move, you're good. Okay? You wrench down on it. Oh yeah, we're gonna move anything we try to, okay? And yes, if you're, you're keeping up to date with the uh, episode marathon we're doing right now, it is Thursday. Uh, we started on Monday. And uh, we're going all the way to, not next Monday, but, but the Monday after that. So for two weeks. But we do have to complete these four projects. The Durango, the Jeep is already completed. The Durango, and then I have two more cars, and I won't show you them. Uh, but the uh, Xterra and the uh, Sentra, both, all those have to be completed. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, we do have two other uh, episodes we're working on today. I'm going to try to release the second one, which is the Serpentine Belt Replacement on the 98 Dodge Durango 5.2 liter engine. So if that interests you, definitely catch it. And uh, I'm sure you will love it, all right? So maintenance, guys. Definitely keep your maintenance intervals up to date so your vehicle does not break down. And also maintenance intervals do cover your tires. Tire suspension, you know, making sure everything's good. You don't have any uh, engine lights that are on, stuff like that. Hey guys, right into our next step in a big complication for a lot of people is how to lift your vehicle properly and safely. So let's get in here. All right guys, as you see, I have my jack, my floor jack here and my jack stand, okay? 
So you want to put your jack stand in the correct spot. You also want to be jacking the vehicle up, lifting it in the correct spot as well. Okay. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, use the double welds. The double welds will do it. Not on all vehicles will the double welds, you know, lift and hold without bending the actual body of the vehicle. Okay. So no, the double welds are always not the spot that you should go to lift your vehicle. As you see, the frame right here is in ni a much nicer spot. And we're going to go ahead, jack the vehicle up, get it right there. See how we're in contact right there. Now we're going to lift the vehicle until it can properly be put on the jack stand. Okay. Now, I know you noticed that I'm using cinder blocks resting the vehicle on that in the front. Now you can do that, that's a way to lift the vehicle up a little if you're trying to do something, but if you do that, make sure you set your emergency brake, okay? Set your emergency brake, and also, under the rear of the vehicle, you need to set chalk blocks. Hi, buddy. Hi. You need to set chalk blocks. Now, they can be your, you know, original chalk block, or... It can be an actual object, like a cinder block. Something to help the vehicle from rolling back while you have it lifted up in the front, okay? Now, if your vehicle rolls back uh, and you set the emergency brake, then uh, you might want to tighten up your emergency brake, okay? So, lifting the vehicle properly is very important, guys, okay? And when you are lifting it, you want to do it slow, nothing too fast. You're just lifting the vehicle up, right? Once you get it to the proper level, you want to put your jack in place, okay? Like this. The tooth needs to go in that groove. That's what holds it in position, guys. And now you're just going to lower the vehicle on that spot. Now, another thing that can really uh, influence your safety is when you are towing a trailer. Okay? And yes, the 98 Dodge Durango can tow a trailer. It can actually do 5,600 pounds. Uh, without changing its axle ratios. Let me show you real quick. Now, if you uh, have your Dodge owner's manual from 1998, page 115, you'll be able to see right there, this Durango has the 5.2 liter engine and the max trailer rating is 5,600 pounds. Now, if you were to change your axle ratio to a greater ratio, you would be able to increase the weight as well. But if you were to increase the weight, uh, I would highly suggest you get a better, better transmission cooler installed on this thing. Now, let me go ahead and take you off the, uh, the tripod real quick. I'm gonna show you guys on the trailer hitch where you will be able to see that as well. Now you have your four prong trailer hookup on here. Uh, some of them have the seven pin as well. So double check that they do have adapters uh, if you need the seven pin or the four pin. As you see right there, it shows your capacity um, when you're carrying with the tongue or you're carrying with the, the hitch itself. Okay, hitch itself is 5,000, tongue max is 500. Okay, if you, uh, they do have, you know, bigger hitches in class three up to class six and all over the place. So, not too bad though. This one's what, Valley Industries. Uh, you see a, a lot of them, all different companies, but as you see right there on the, the right, say capacity used with a low distributing hitch 
a weight distributing hitch. Look at the increase in your, your weight from 5,000 pounds to 7,500 pounds. Even the tongue weight is increased by 250 as well. So these are all numbers that you need to take into account when loading up your trailer and picking the vehicle that you are choosing to haul that trailer with. All right guys, last but never least, PPE. That's personal protective equipment, guys. That is the most important thing you can think of, okay? My wife reminds me all the time about my safety glasses. You got tinted safety glasses, you have clear safety glasses, you have goggles, okay? You have gloves so you don't beat your hands all up, huh? You have the uh, steel toe safety boots, huh? So I wear those because I'm, I'm wrenching all day, right? I'm going in, I'm going out. I mean, I could drop something on my foot. I mean, even when I'm doing my just DIY projects around the house, I wear my steel toe boots. Why? Well, because uh, I'm moving some wood or I'm moving a desk or something. You ever drop a desk on your toes? I mean, it's just a terrible, terrible feeling. You know, it's like, mm, like you want to yell, right? You want to just curse it up, but Ain't gonna change anything. You drop the desk on your foot, bro. Nothing's gonna change that, okay? So, guys, personal protective equipment. I know you'll catch me not wearing my safety glasses sometimes. My wife reminds me every time she sees an episode and I don't wear my safety glasses. You know, uh, call it old habits, die hard, right? So, um, wear your glasses, wear your gloves, wear your boots, okay? You don't work in the garage in sandals. Uh, I've done it before, and every time I do it, I always jack my foot up, okay? Or I'll wear sandals and be moving wood around, and I'll step on a nail. I don't know. When we moved in our new house, I stepped on a nail like six times, you know? But what can you do, right? I guess it's too hard to think about. So, guys, thank you so much for watching another great episode right here on the channel, Sell Those Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and I want to thank you so much for your continued support here on the channel, guys. It is greatly much appreciated. I love the support. I love your questions. Guys, if you do have any questions about any of my videos, please leave them in the chat section down below or the comment section down below. But make sure you leave the comment on the video that you have questions about because I'm not gonna know what you're talking about if you're talking about a video I did like 80 videos ago, okay? My memory's not that well since the military. So I love helping you guys out. Please just leave your questions down there. I would love to actually knock out any problems that you're having on your project or a vehicle that you are driving at the moment. So remember that every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have my YouTube Live that's an automotive questions and answers session for you guys. It answers all of your questions, any, any concern or, or thing that's going on with your vehicle or a project you're working on. That's your time that you can ask me personally. And I stay on there for about one to two hours, so I always love helping you guys out. Remember, we are in the middle of an episode marathon. I'm totally psyched about this. Uh, it is Thursday. We are going until, not this Monday, next Monday. An episode every single day. May 7th is a totally separate competition. It is a deadline. I am running to May 7th. I have a DMV appointment, so I have to have all my vehicles done by May 6th. So when I go into the DMV, DMV, I switch all five of the titles. That way, all of them are able to be sold that day. So it's a really fun competition. I want to have you guys along the way. I am still doing my DIY auto repair videos along with catching you guys up with the projects and doing these extra videos as well, like the safety and the, and, um, <laughs> safety in the workplace, the importance of vehicle safety, the ergonomics in the garage we did yesterday. I really hope you guys liked that one because I, I had a lot of fun actually making that one for you. So guys, thank you so much for your continued support. Stay tuned. Uh, our next episode, hold on just a second guys. I gotta actually check my list here.
Oh. Today we did uh, vehicle safety, importance of vehicle safety. Tomorrow is actually going to be rebuilding that pressure washer uh, that we picked up. The Troy built pressure washer I picked up for $50 and I put a new, I put a new water pump in it and now it works amazing guys so i want to actually show you guys through that one because you guys can find that stuff on offer up or facebook marketplace or craigslist you know people just get rid of it they don't know how to fix it well guess what you know how to fix it so get a pressure washer in your garage wash the cars wash the driveway wash the house i mean your significant other is gonna love you so much more for it Everyone loves a clean house, so ain't nothing wrong with that. So, guys, thank you so much. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of the pressure washer uh, rebuild. And also, I'm working on a transmission uh, transmission cooler line delete kit. Uh, we're not deleting it. We're replacing the OEM uh, transmission cooler lines that they have in the 98 Dodge Durango. Yes, that was that leak I found yesterday. If you guys are tracking all the videos uh, along with the procession of the videos. So it was the transmission cooler lines on the 98 Dodge Durango uh, that were losing transmission fluid. Now we fixed the transmission pan gasket yesterday, but now we have transmission cooler lines we have to deal with. We're gonna replace that serpentine belt as well on the Dodge Durango. So stay tuned for that one, guys. So a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff coming up. So definitely stay tuned for it right here on the channel, guys. Thank you so much. I'm Zachary with Sell This Flipping Cars. And until next time, guys, hey, keep on wrenching, guys. Take care.